you may recall from um, your reading at the beginning of this the current chapter that there are three things that make the angiosperms, the flowering plants, different from other types of vascular plants. And uh, these three things are described as a three Fs. And so one of the Fs is going to be flowers, of course. Uh, number two is going to apply to fertilization, the double fertilization we see happening in the angiosperms. And number three, the third F is going to be fruits. So flowers, double fertilization, and fruits are unique traits, derived traits of the angiosperms, the flowering plants. And so at this point you may be asking, so what is exactly is a fruit? From a botanical, from a scientific point of view, a fruit is going to be a structure that develops from a flower and contains seeds. And so this probably will make you think about things we eat and we call traditionally vegetables, but actually fit this, this criterion. Uh, for example, something like a bell pepper. A bell pepper develops from a flower. And what's inside of the bell pepper? Uh, excuse me? Yes, seeds are there. And so does that mean that the bell pepper is a fruit? Yes. Remember, botanically speaking, from a scientific point of view, a fruit is any structure from a plant that developed from a flower and has seeds inside. So that means tomatoes are fruits. Zucchini is a fruit. Squash is a fruit. Uh, what else can we think about here? Uh, eggplant is a fruit. Uh, and many of these plants I'm mentioning right now, well, at least the things we eat, are a form of a berry. And so who would have thought that a bell pepper is actually a berry? Now, we usually think about fruits as those things that are sweet uh, and pleasant to eat. Uh, Banana is actually a fruit. Uh, apples are fruits. Grapes are fruits. Cherries. Uh, pretty soon it's going to be cherry season. And I'm going to be the happiest man in the world eating my Rainier cherries. Uh, that's my favorite one. So uh, what exactly can we learn at this point, just from an introductory point of view, about fruits? So number one, remember, a fruit develops from the ovary of a plant. In fact, it is the ripe or ripened ovary of a flower. That's what a fruit is. And uh, you may not want to think about it this way when you're eating a fruit, you're eating the ovary of a plant. Well, it's a sweet ovary, so it's okay. Now, don't tell people about these things because some other people are gonna freak out like, ah! And then if you like eating seeds, like nuts, do you like nuts? Do you like walnuts, pecans, cashews? What's inside of a seed? It's an embryo. So when you're eating seeds, you're eating plant embryos. And again, don't think about it that way or tell people that when they're eating seeds, they're eating embryos because they're gonna freak out. So it's plant embryos anyway, so it's all right. We're getting a lot of the nutrition from the endosperm, from the cotyledons, and that's why we eat seeds as well. But that's a whole different topic. We already talked about seeds anyway. So the purpose of a fruit which contains a seed inside of some nutritious and often sweet material is that it allures, it attracts animals that will eat the fruit and help the plant with the process of spreading its seed. Because remember, the plant doesn't want to have all of its offspring growing right there around it because there'll be a lot of competition for water and nutrients. And so the dispersal of the plant, the dispersing of the seeds is going to be one of the advantages, one of the reasons plants are going to invest so much energy and resources in the making of fruits. Now fruits can be dispersed not only by animals, but also by wind and water can also carry fruits. Uh, when you think, for example, about a coconut, and those can be actually be seen drifting in the oceans all around the world. There are different ways we can classify fruits. Some fruits are classified as dry, if the ovary dries out at maturity, uh, or fleshy if the ovary becomes sometimes like thick or soft, and especially the wall of the ovary remains fleshy and often sweet when the fruit is mature. Fruits can also be classified by their development. Uh, before I go into the development, uh, let me give you some examples of dry fruits. So, so for example, um, 
peanuts. You sometimes may eat peanuts in the shell. Well, the shell is actually the ovary, uh, covering of the ovary, uh, and because it dries up and it's, and it's you know, relatively hard, you don't eat that. Uh, that is going to be an example of a dry fruit, the peanuts, and then the seeds are inside. But when you think, for example, about sunflowers, see some flowers when they come inside of the shell, the shell, that's the ovary tissue and it's dry, uh, and then the seed is going to be inside the, the um, sunflower with the shell. It's a type of fruit known as an akeem. Uh, and there are other examples of dry fruits and you know, fleshy fruits, as I mentioned before, apples, bananas, uh, grapes, cherries, tomatoes, all of those are examples of fleshy fruits. Now let's go back to the classification based on their development. So simple fruits, are going to be those that develop from a single flower, or sometimes there may be like several carpels that are part of the same flower and they fuse together. So that's gonna be a simple fruit. Uh, when you think of simple fruits, think of something like a peach, like a nectarine. Those are examples of simple fruits. A grape is a simple fruit. Aggregate fruits are going to be a single flower the single flower has separate, uh, separate carpels, but those carpels don't fuse. They remain separated from each other. And so what you end up with is, is like a cluster of many little fruitlets. As, as an example, we have here something like a raspberry. When you think about blackberries, those are examples of aggregate fruits. It was one flower with many carpels, but the carpels never fused. So you have the little fruitlets connected together. Sometimes you may encounter multiple fruits. And so multiple fruits are going to be those that develop from an inflorescence. So you have many flowers uh, from one receptacle and then the flowers, they each have their carpels. Eventually the carpels fuse and uh, makes it real hard to distinguish where one fruit begins and when the next one uh, ends. And as an example of a multiple fruit, you can see a pineapple. I'll give you an, another example of a multiple fruit, jackfruit. Do you like jackfruit? It's really good. I like it especially in a drink. That jackfruit is an example of a multiple fruit. That figs are examples of multiple fruits. Uh, so remember, that's an inflorescence. It's like a bunch of flowers, many flowers, then the carpels eventually fuse, making what seems to be one fruit, but it's actually, it's a multiple fruit. Some fruits are going to be accessory fruits, meaning that the ovary tissue is not what you eat. What you're eating is a receptacle. And so remember in the structure of a flower, you have the petals, you have the sepals, there is the carpels and the stamens, and all of those are going to be attached to a tissue called the receptacle. The receptacle is not actually part of the ovary. Uh, and uh, it's not part of the flower either. So sometimes that is a portion of the plant that becomes enlarged and uh, fleshy and sweet to eat. And that is going to be the case of apples. It's gonna be the case of uh, pears. Uh, and so the receptacle tissue, that's the sweet part. The only part of the uh, ovary that remains is the core, the part of the apple you don't eat and you usually throw it away and the seeds are in there. So those are what we call accessory fruits. And uh, because the purpose of the fruit is to help carry away the seeds from the parent plant that produce them, here we see once again mechanisms with a few examples and then the lion, the little thing you see flying, that's a fruit. It's an example of an akeen, A-C-H-E-N-E. -E. That's how you spell akeen. Uh, here you see uh, the fruit produced by a maple tree, and you can see the wings, and those wings are something that can help the seed be carried away, the fruit be carried away by the wind. And here the same happens with the little filaments that work like wings, carrying away the akins or fruits from the dandelion. Uh, I talked to you before about um, coconuts and how coconut trees, coconut palms, are going to drop the coconuts and then ocean currents can carry those all over the world. Dispersal by animals, there are gonna be some uh, fruits that are going to have these nasty thorns and they can actually 
painfully get in the fur or the skin of animals, and that's how they can be carried from one place to another. Other seeds are going to be traveling in the digestive tract of an animal, and then when the animal defecates, when they poop in a different place where, from where they ate the fruit, they are going to be taking the seeds of a plant away from it. Uh, some other animals, like squirrels, are going to carry those uh, nuts or seeds, uh, sometimes acorns, in their mouth and take it away to another place where they will be stashing them, storing them for later when seeds become limited. Uh, here you see an example of an ant uh, carrying the seeds from a plant over to the ant hole where uh, this is going to be a reserve of uh, a storage of uh, food for the ants to depend on during the winter when seeds are not available. And uh, so the, remembering the three F's of the flowering plants, uh, one of the F's is going to be fruits and the important role they play. I think I'm going to post also a video that just shows all of the different types of fruits, not necessarily to put in the exam, but uh, just for you to uh, get a kick out of uh, fruit classification. And uh, please don't go to the supermarket telling people that when they're buying a zucchini, they're actually buying a fruit. They may actually like slap you for saying silly things like those, but it is a fruit, zucchini is. And so is a bell pepper. All right, class, I hope you're enjoying learning about the angiosperms, the flowering plants and the reproductive cycles.